Today I'm going to show you how you can take literally one lick and build an entire blues solo around it. This is the lick. We've all heard it a million times before. It's a cliche, but it's also an essential part of blues vocabulary for guitar players especially. This lesson is sponsored by Neural DSP, and if you want to try out the exact same tone that I'm using right now, scroll down to the description box beneath the video download my Les Paul Blues preset and a free trial of the Tone King Imperial Mark II plugin. I have no doubt in my mind that after you try this plugin, you'll agree that it sounds incredible for blues guitar tones. So we're in the key of A today and the notes of this lick relative to the one chord are flat three, major third, perfect fifth, major sixth, and the root note A. The major third is the most important note there because that's one of the main chord tones in a dominant seventh chord, which is the chord type that you're playing over. Here's an A7 chord, for example. It's built with a root, major third, perfect fifth, and flat seventh. So naturally, when you target that major third, in a solo over that chord, it's gonna sound like you're aware of the chords that you're playing over and intentionally highlighting them with your note choices, which is great. But blues players rarely play that major third outright. They often ascend to it from a semitone below, one fret lower from a flat third, which is this note right here. And that's exactly what makes this lick so useful. You are targeting the major third of the chord in a creative way. You're not simply playing the major third and nothing else before it. You're ascending to it from a lower note. If you're new to blues playing and you want to relate those notes to something that you already know, let's look at position one of the minor pentatonic. That scale has a root, flat third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and flat seventh. Again, root, flat third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, flat seventh. So the flat third that starts the lick is part of that minor pentatonic scale. The major third is just a semitone higher. The fifth is also part of the minor pentatonic. The major sixth from our cliche blues lick is two frets above that fifth or one fret below the flat seventh. And of course the root note is the same, A. These notes from outside the minor pentatonic, that being the major third and major sixth, can also be found in the major pentatonic scale, but perhaps some of you watching only know the minor pentatonic, and so I just wanted to relate them to something that you are likely to already know. If you want to learn about major and minor pentatonic scales and how to solo with them, I would recommend checking out my first course, Bulletproof Guitar Player at Master the Fretboard. You can purchase it with a one-time payment for offline access or subscribe to my website and get streamable access to all of my courses and my monthly bonus content for one price for as long as you like. This lick functions really well as a motif, which if you don't know, is a short musical phrase that you can repeat and alter melodically and rhythmically as a means of developing a well-crafted solo, be it on the spot in an improvisational situation or a composed solo. So listen back to the start of my solo and notice how I repeat the first lick, but end it differently the second time. When I first play it, I end on this high root note. But the second time around, I descend the minor pentatonic scale and throw in another major third towards the end, like this. That makes it much more interesting for the listener 
compared to literally just playing the exact same notes with the same rhythmic values twice like this. Now we're at the point in a blues progression where the chords are changing from the one chord to the four chord for two bars and then back to the one chord. So the four chord in this key is D7. So let's listen to what I played over this part of the progression in that solo. Moving from the one to the four chord, I played something like this. Which of course starts with the same motif that we've played already that targets the major third of that one chord. But it ends with me targeting the major third of the four chord D7. last two notes there are F sharp and D, the major third and root of a D7 chord. Now I needed to do that because the major third of the one chord that we've heard a number of times already during the solo simply will not work over that four chord because the thing about blues improvisation is that you have to treat the three chords, the one, the four and the five independently almost as if you're playing in three different keys, which I mean, you sort of are when you're playing over a 12 bar blues. What works great over the one chord won't necessarily sound so good over the four chord and vice versa. So what you'll find that the masters of the genre often do in their solos is target the chord tones of each of the chords, the one, the four, and the five. That is what's happening here. I'm showing an awareness of the chords changing because I switch from targeting the major third of the one chord to targeting the same chord tone, but of the four chord. I am reflecting what's happening in the chord progression with my note choices. And what I play over that four chord after this is this. which I'm loosely basing around a D7 arpeggio. And then when the chords change back to the one chord, I bring back the motif that we've already played, again, targeting the major third of the one chord. So that's us heading back to the one chord there. And here I'm obviously targeting the root note, but I'm getting in that major third as well. What we're gonna look at next is the turnaround of the progression. But before we do, I'm just gonna talk about the tone that I'm getting in this video. I'm using the new Tone King Imperial Mark II plugin from Neural DSP and my patch called Les Paul Blues can be downloaded for free along with a free trial of the plugin via the links in the description box. So you can literally try this exact tone out for yourself at home now. The preset is really quite simple. It's using the rhythm channel of the amp with a ribbon mic and a 57 on the speaker. That's my go-to mic combination these days. I'm not using any of the overdrive pedals that come with the plugin, but I am using delay for a slap back effect with the time set to around 130 milliseconds and I'm also using the reverb pedal with the decay all the way down and the mix quite high. So it sounds like a nice room reverb and all of that combined sounds like this.
like I said earlier, you can try out that preset with a free trial of the plugin via the links in the description box. And let's get back to the lesson. Now let's listen again to what I played over the turnaround of the progression. <laughs> If you don't know, a turnaround is the final four bars in a 12 bar blues progression where the five chord is played for one bar, then the four chord is played for one bar, and then the one chord comes back for the final two bars. So in this key, that sounds like this. So that was the five chord for one bar. It's E7, where I'm playing an E9 there. Then D7, and then A7 for two bars. In the example that you just heard, that actually started on the one chord right before the start of the turnaround. And I played that one chord cliche blues lick again. But I used it to get me in a good position to then highlight the sound, or highlight the chords rather, of the turnaround, which I'll explain my approach to now. So we've got four bars to play over and three of those bars feature chords that we've already played over, the one and four chords, A7 and D7. We haven't yet touched the five chord, E7. So what do you think we can do to highlight that chord? Well, what I did in my solo was the same as what I did to highlight the sound of the other two chords. I targeted the major third. In an E7 chord, G sharp is the major third. This note right here. So here's how I targeted that going into the turnaround, starting with our cliche blues lick over the one chord. See what I did there? I'm sliding into the major third of that five chord, but then also going down to the root of the chord. Then the chords change to the four chord D7 and I highlight it by again, targeting the root and major third, as well as actually the flat seventh here. That note there, C, that's the flat seventh in a D7 chord. And then we're back to the one chord for the final two bars of the progression. And of course, I'm bringing back that same lick that targets the major third of the one chord. So hopefully this has given you some food for thought when it comes to developing solos of your own. You can get a lot of mileage out of the same idea, especially in blues, but you wanna make sure that you don't just repeat that idea in the exact same way every single time. You want to try and alter it in subtle ways, melodically and rhythmically, and use it as a way of connecting other melodic ideas and phrases together in the context of a solo. My name is Ross Campbell. Thank you for watching. If you're new, please subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.